Hello, welcome to the RC Block. I'm Jamie Nitro, and today I'm going to do a video on the Sison 4 speed transmission. We're going to show you some of the key features of it, take you through, show you how it operates, and just give you a base overview of the whole transmission itself. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so here we go. We got the transmission out. Now, this is everything that you would get with the Sison transmission. Uh, minus this mod brake modification that I've done to the transmission. Um, now, if you're curious on doing this brake modification yourself, what I've used is a Revo uh, brake pads with the T-Max rotor. And uh, I've hooked it directly right onto my, uh, my hex here. Um, this is off of another gearbox, this hex. And I'm just using that one to fill in the gap. It's worked perfectly. Uh, it doesn't have any oblong or anything. And uh, it does really nice e-brakes. This is a 42 millimeter disc. But everything else you see in here is what you would get uh, when you receive the transmission. I've already taken off the access plate in the bottom here. So you're able to see uh, everything working. This here is the reducer that comes with it. Now, normally when you get this transmission, the reducer is already attached here. And that greatly reduces uh, the gearbox ratio and really slows the machine down. Now, when you get this, this gear is going to be put on here. And that gear is going to connect to all the little gears inside this guy here now inside if you look the gears are really nicely made it's a very high precision product they've done a very nice job on everything uh excellent machining i, I really love checking out all their machining processes <clears throat> if you look at all the gears in here everything operates very nice and smooth all steel gears they got bearings they use spacers and everything to keep everything running smoothly with this you don't need any type of oils in here but you can put grease or oils and such but from what i found from running this uh, transmission it, it's perfectly fine without now i don't use this feature because what i found is if i take this off and connect the drive shaft directly to the output shaft of the transmission i get a much more realistic speed and power out of the transmission for what my project was which is building a drift truck now this transmission i have set up in a manual aspect if you want i guess you could have it on uh, toggle switches and, and you'd want to use three position toggle switches so that you can go, you know, into your reverse, back to neutral, back into first. So you would need three positions or you can do what I done and you can just, I have a 10 channel radio here. Now I have extra switches that I can use for other stuff. And what I've done to make this manual is I control each gear how far it engages every time just uh, you know kind of like a real clutch so everything's done electronically through my endpoints so that I don't push too hard onto the, the gear lever here now before I get into operation here one of the things I've done to this gearbox is just down here, I've added a little brass uh, tubing. Then I put a three millimeter hex nut on here. And, and what that does is that really firms up this shifter. Before there was a little bit of play in there and I really didn't like that. Uh, it, it just, it seemed like it could potentially come out or strip a thread or something. By adding this lock nut and spacer in here, everything's tightened up nicely. I get good, consistent throws. Everything is what I would want. 
now looking at underneath this is how it works so if we go to these are your individual little plates that you have here and these are two little locking plates right here one here and one here and in the center there you got your drive plate and then sandwich in between you got a clutch plate here here and here now you have this set up on all four gears so that's why I don't know why they call it a dual clutch transmission when it actually has four clutch assemblies in it now these are the shifter yokes here and when you slide it over it presses the clutches together and engages that gear and causes everything to work now on the reverse gear on this side of the transmission uh, you got your reverse you got your first and this is on a hex that is bolted to the main shaft on this side of the transmission you're going to have your second gear and your third gear over here and this set of gears these two gears are on a one-way bearing so this one-way bearing i can how does it go here if i engage the gears the gears spin and i can hold that with my hand but if i try to go the other way it locks into place and, and turns the whole thing so that's how simple this transmission is very very simple one of the greatest things about this is the fact that using a pressure plate means you don't have to build up rpm to engage the gear uh you can engage the gear at any rpm which means you can literally just idle along if you engage it too fast you will stall out your motor like a real car uh that's what makes this transmission so amazing is it acts like a real transmission when everything's hooked up and driving it's very cool to drive i can sit here all day just idling this thing and it's just it's fun because i don't have to sit there and rev rev the piss out of it just to get it to move so that is very cool the other cool fact about having the clutch built into the transmission like that you don't have to put the clutch on the motor like uh, all the centrifugal clutches are on the end of the motor here now with this motor that I've I put the Sison gearbox on on the Howen They don't have a way for you to put a clutch on it Which led me down the rabbit hill of figuring out how to make the Sison Transmission work on the Howen engine uh, and in order to do that. I ended up just making a little adapter ring uh, that brought this inside gear to the gear here uh, and mesh up nicely I've got probably about five hours six hours on this transmission now of driving time and uh, the gears all look fantastic there I don't see like any I don't even see any wear happening so that's pretty amazing considering I'm I'm one of those guys who's used to putting grease and everything this is a transmission you do not want to put any type of grease or lube on the gears now I did use WD-40 to lubricate the one-way bearing and I did use a little bit of motor oil on the shaft for each gear uh, only on the shaft just a small amount because you don't want that oil uh, leaking out or going into anywhere else other than on the shaft so if you put the oil like on the back side of the shaft and press the gear down then at least it'll rub all the oil into the bearing and stuff and it's not on the side of the clutches so that's what i did for that and everything moves really really nicely as you can see uh when this is on the on the motor the motor is going to turn in this direction so that's going to put the gear going in this direction here so and then you can see if i go and change put in reverse that causes the gear to go backwards if i go into first cause it to go the other way if i have it in neutral there it doesn't turn at all 
So a very simplistic design, easy to use, uh, very low maintenance. Now at first there there was a little bit of issues with uh, with the reverse idler gear, which is behind this plate, and it was contacting the outer housing here, and uh, it might be hard to see, but there's actually yeah right there. You can see I had the gear actually kind of damaged it the idler gear i've actually rotated it the other way because i wanted to see after i fixed it if it would do any more damage and it didn't so but it doesn't matter with these with these inner yokes here you, you can have them either way um so that's universal the reverse plates are different from the second third gear plates so it's very hard to mix them up i'll make sure i'll throw a picture of the gearbox uh, completely disassembled in in the video here as well now um, this is the part this motor is originally or this transmission sorry is originally made for the Sison L4 engine and what they do is they give you this little guy here which originally would have this gear that I have on my motor right now is normally on this little adapter here and this adapter would bolt with those three cap screws right onto the back of the the original engine that it was meant for and you would use loctite of course so none of that comes loose and uh that would go onto your engine and then this would directly mount up to the back of the engine so it actually mounts up very easily uh, one of the things that I like to make sure is I'll take a vernier with my shims depending on if I'm going to use one or if I'm going to use the other one as well. I only need to use one but then I'll take my vernier and I'll just double check that the measurement that I have from the top of here to the bottom of the gear tooth is going to line up to the bottom of the gear tooth on the engine here. So the nice thing to know about this transmission is even though it was intended for a specific engine, you can still make this and use it for other engines. I've um, been looking at the Sison V8. It looks like this can be adapted to work for that engine. Uh, you just have to make a, a bell housing adapter kind of like what I did for the Howen here. Also, Howen, they have that new V8, V10, and V12. I strongly believe that with a small modification that this transmission will actually bolt right onto those engines. Um, of course, I have to see the finished product uh, or at least get it in my hands before I can know for sure. But uh, it's a pretty cool transmission that you can make work for pretty much anything. So, and then that is what the internals look like for this transmission. Now, they also give you these little mounting plates for servos, for micro servos, so you can mount them directly however you want onto here. It, it's kind of, I don't know, they weren't really for me. I, I just ended up uh, going another route where they're a little bit more hidden than out of view where no one will ever see them. And then I have them connected through longer push rods here and O-rings uh, just to give some dampening uh, for my shifters here. Other than that, that's basically the whole of the Sison transmission. So there you go. That's the Sison transmission. I think Sison did a great job with this one. They really hit it out of the park. And it's because of them and this transmission that I'm able to realize my dream of this RC. So I want to thank them. I want to thank Howen for making this beautiful engine. And I also want to thank Sterling Kit. They've done a fantastic job with customer support. They're always there to answer my questions. And I just think they're fantastic. But most of all, I want to thank all of you guys for watching my videos and I hope that you like and subscribe and get more videos out to you. Thank you for watching. 
Good luck on your next build. Bye for now.